Hi, my name is Ben Norton from Out Filming, and I'm here today with a whole host of Atomos products. In fact, it's most of their lineup. Now, you're probably wondering what's going on on the desk here. There's GH4 up this end, a whole bunch of cabling, um, and it's a bit chaotic, but we'll come on to that a little bit later. The big question is why would you buy an external recorder or monitor? I think Atomos probably really started off in life for those digital SLR filmers who wanted to get around the issue of internal compression within the camera, recording in higher bitrate codecs, or just to avoid things like record time limits. But their product range has really evolved. So now there's additional reasons. You may want to use one as a proxy recorder when you're recording in high bit rates on camera. Or even the other end, the flip side, is using one to record RAW whilst your camera's recording a lower level codec. The added benefit with the majority of these products is also the excellent monitors. Now we use a Shogun often, it comes with us on most shoots, in fact it's rigged on this camera now at the moment. It isn't recording at all, but it does provide an excellent monitoring solution for the camera. We have four products here, the Ninja Star, the Samurai Blade, unfortunately we don't have its brother here, the Ninja Blade, which is the HDMI equivalent, the Ninja Assassin, and the Shogun. Now all of these are plumbed into the Panasonic GH4. Now as a bit of a warning, this is quite a long video, but I will run through the entire product range in quite some detail. However, if you want a quick version, then here it is. If you're not fussed about having a monitor and you want a compact recorder that records HD, through an HDMI input, then the Ninja Star is for you. If you do want a monitor, but you're not fussed about 4K, then if you run an HDMI system, look at the Ninja Blade, and if you run an SDI based system, look at the Samurai Blade. If you do want 4K or just a bigger monitor, then look at the Ninja Assassin if you have HDMI, or the Shogun if you have SDI and HDMI. And if you want something that will record RAW, then the Shogun is the one for you. If you'd like to hear more about the products in much more detail, then keep watching. Now, all the devices have a number of things in common. They all come with great carry cases and usually a number of accessories. From a power point of view, they all take the Sony Star NPF series battery. And they're all capable of recording Apple ProRes at 10 bits or at 8 bits 422 and they can record it in HQ, 422, or LT. Now as a baseline, all the devices are capable of recording 720 at 60 frames per second progressive, and 1080 at 30 frames per second progressive. They also all support pull down as three by two or two by two, really handy for when you're trying to get those interlaced images into progressive ready for your timeline. And most importantly, they all have affordable memory solutions. The first product we're going to talk about is the Ninja Star, the smallest of the group. Now this retails for a shade under £200 XFAT, and it offers some great functionality for its size. The Ninja Star has three ports on the side of it. A micro HDMI input, which is capable of taking a 1080 HD signal. It can also carry across two channels of digital audio and will also accept an HDMI trigger. So when you hit record on the camera, the device will automatically start recording. There's also a micro HDMI output, which allows pass through when in record mode, or outputting to a screen when you're in playback mode. The final port is a three and a half mil audio input, which allows you to add an additional two channels of analog audio. When in playback mode, this also acts as a headphone or line out. On the other side of the device is a slot for a C fast card. Now these look identical to the CF cards, but they're not to be confused with each other. The card just slides into the side of the Ninja Star, and it protrudes just a tiny bit. There are four buttons on the device, and each of them doubles up to offer additional functionality. This can be accessed by either holding them down or holding them down in pairs. The Ninja Star doesn't have any built-in tripod mounts, but it does come with its own cheese plate, which gives you a variety of options. On the back of the device is where you mount the battery, and there's also a second tally light so you know when it's recording. 
The Ninja Star is a great little device. It gives you really good bang for your buck. It works well as an entry level recorder, but also works really well for when you need a recorder in a specialist circumstance. The next product in our lineup is the Samurai Blade. This supports SDI. There's also an HDMI version called the Ninja Blade, which is identical in every other way. This device again has a really solid feel to it. And there are quarter inch mounting points on the bottom and on the top. Round the back, there are two places for batteries. And this would allow you to hot swap whilst you were recording. On this side, we have SDI input and output. There's a port for LAN connection. And there's also audio input, allowing again another two channels of analog audio and a line out or headphone out for monitoring. There is also a slot on the side for the master caddy. The caddy itself takes two and a half inch discs, either SSDs or HDs, and there's a whole list of supported devices that can slot inside. Again, a really affordable memory solution. To install it, all you have to do is slide it in and it's ready to go. Unlike the Ninja Star, the Samurai Blade has a screen on it. It is a five inch IPS 1280 by 720 capacitive touch screen. Atomos calibrate the screen at the factory, but they recommend that it's recalibrated every four weeks. To make this an easy job to do, they also sell as a separate accessory, the Spider. To calibrate, all you do is attach the Spider to the screen and run some software through your computer. It's a quick and simple process. One of the things I love most about Atomos products is the clear and simple to use interface. In the case of the Samurai Blade, it's running Atom OS 5. Along the top, I can see what input I have coming in, the codec that's running, how much record time I have left, and the status of my power. Down the left-hand side, I have a number of tools. The first of these is waveform. I can bring up luminance, RGB, and vector scope, and change the size and position of where they display. There are a number of tools in Atom OS 5, including Focus Assist, Zebra, False Color, Blue Only, and a selection of guides. In addition, I can also tag clips with one of two pieces of metadata a favorite or reject. This can be done whilst you're recording, but it can also be done in playback mode, allowing you to import this as XML into your editing platform. Down in the bottom corner, I can adjust my headphone volume, and I can also monitor my audio levels coming in. Now, I don't want to go into it in too much detail, but you can clearly see you can monitor every input you have and decide which channels you're going to be recording. The Samurai Blade also supports playback on the device and through the SDI. Like the Ninja Star, the Samurai Blade supports camera trigger through the SDI input. In addition to this, it also supports timecode from the camera, allowing post-sync to be a lot easier. As well as supporting the various forms of ProRes, the Samurai Blade can also record an AVID DNX HD codec. The Samurai or Ninja Blade would be the perfect device for someone looking for a compact monitoring and external recording system. With calibration, the screen is color accurate and the recording solution would be great for someone with perhaps a RED or an F5 or F55 camera looking to record HD proxies. At the other end of the scale, it would also be a great solution for someone looking for HD recording in a higher bit rate than their camera currently offers. Next is the Ninja Assassin, and it's certainly a step up in screen size, moving to a 7 inch 1920 by 1200 IPS capacitive touch screen. The Ninja Assassin and the Shogun are both made from ABS polycarbonate rather than aluminium like the other products. This gives it a slightly lighter feel 
and it is only 430 grams. We've had our Shogun for some time now and it's certainly been on a lot of shoots and had a lot of use and it's holding up incredibly well. The Ninja Assassin also comes with this rather funky case called an armor bumper. It's great for a little bit of extra protection and comes with a handy desk stand at the back. There are also quarter inch mounts on the top and on the bottom of the device itself. On this side of the device, we have DC and LAN connection, as well as the power button. On the back, we share the same master caddy system as the Samurai Blade. We also have a place for an MPF battery. And there is a small tally light hidden away here for when record is activated. Down this side, we have LANC input, three and a half mil audio line in or headphone out. This adds an additional two channels of analog audio like the other devices, in addition to the eight channels of HDMI digital audio. And we also have full size HDMI in and out. The screen size isn't the only upgrade for the Ninja Assassin. The big piece of news is it is a 4K capable recorder. Now it can record HD at up to 60 frames a second progressive or 4K at up to 30 frames a second progressive. It also supports Avid's DNX HR codec. The Ninja Assassin is running the latest version of Atomos's OS, Atom OS 6. It shares all the same functionality as OS 5, but has a whole host of new features. The layout on screen is pretty similar to OS 5, but with OS 6, we have our buttons relocated down the bottom here. New features in OS 6 include the ability to downscale a 4K input and pass it through the HDMI as an HD output. We also have new functionality for time-lapsing within the device itself. And this has a whole bunch of functionality, including speed ramping and motion blur. We have exactly the same scopes as OS 5, but we have some new tools. These include the ability to zoom in to allow you to get critical focus on your subject, much better set of guides, and anamorphic de-squeeze. One of the other updates is the addition of tags. We now have 10 tags to label our footage with, whereas in OS 5 there was only two, good or bad. The audio metering hasn't really changed at all. We still have the ability to add gain and delay frames so we can get sync in place. The big addition to OS 6 are the support of 3D LUTs. The Ninja Assassin comes with some pre-loaded LUTs, but more importantly is you can load your own through the Master Caddy. The LUT can be applied to half the monitor, the full monitor, it can be applied to the output, and it can also be baked into the recording itself. We also have the addition of pre-roll on the recording, essentially allowing you to cache what's being seen so that when you hit the record button, you take the previous eight seconds of HD and up to three seconds of 4K imagery. Just like the Samurai Blade, the Ninja Assassin and the Shogun can both have their screen calibrated with the additional Atomos Spider. The Ninja Assassin is not just a great field monitor. It also extends the capabilities of 4K capable cameras, which perhaps don't have internal recording, or their internal recording is limited to a slim codec. The Ninja Assassin comes in at just under 900 pounds, excluding VAT. If you don't need SDI capability, then this is a great choice. However, if you do need SDI, then the next step up is the Shogun. It shares all the same functionality as the other devices, but it has a few more tricks up its sleeve. The biggest of these is its capability to record RAW. This is perfect for cameras such as the Sony FS7 series or the Canon C500. It's also capable of recording up to 120 frames a second in HD. As well as full-size HDMI in and out, just like the Ninja Assassin, we also have SDI in and out, 
and a BNC connection for gen locking timecode. Much like the Ninja Assassin, the Shogun can also downscale 4K content to HD, so it can pass it through via HDMI or via SDI. It can also take an HDMI signal and push that out as SDI, and an SDI signal and push that out as HDMI. The other item that's also different is the audio input. In addition to the eight channels of HDMI audio and 12 channels of SDI audio, through a breakout cable, we also get two channels of balanced XLR line or mic input. The Shogun also offers 48 volt phantom powering. The OS, the feature list and the functionality is otherwise identical to the Ninja Assassin. The Shogun comes in at just over £1,300, excluding VAT. So to summarise, if you don't want to be restricted to HDMI or SDI only, and you want the option to be able to convert between the two and downscale in that process, and you're after a big screen, then the Shogun is a great choice. But most importantly, is it supports 4K and RAW. So this is your only option if you're after a RAW setup. Five, four, three, two, one, end of death. Atomos are excellent at releasing new features for their products through their FOMO release program. This means on a regular basis, we see upgrades to existing functionality and new features coming in to products that are already in existence. So we're super keen to see what Atomos is going to release next and what new features and functionality they're going to give to us for our existing products. Atomos have done a great job at releasing a product lineup to suit a variety of budgets and technical needs. If you're in the market for an external recorder or monitor, then I really suggest you take a good look at the Atomos range. It offers good value for money and a whole host of features you would expect to only see on higher end devices.